Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayers on Wednesday, March 30th. Let's begin this morning with our opening sentences. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. That's from Psalm 51. O depth of wealth, wisdom, and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are God's judgments, how untraceable are God's ways. The source, guide, and goal of all that is, to God be glory forever, from Romans 11. Our morning psalm today comes from Psalm 118, verses 19 and 20. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, the righteous shall enter through it. And our scripture reading today is a couple of selections from Luke chapter 23. We're going to start with verses 27 to 31, and then we're going to skip ahead to verses 33 and 34. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it's dry? When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. This is the word of the Lord. So, to be honest, rereading this passage today shocked me a little bit. I had forgotten how harsh Jesus's words to the women are. Unlike the Roman soldiers we looked at last week, these women are not here to mock Jesus, but to mourn him. They're bearing witness to his unjust murderer and standing in solidarity with him. They're refusing to let him face this alone. Their presence lends support. I would have expected his message to them to be one of comfort or gratitude. But what Jesus has to say here is kind of a downer. Basically, he says, if you think what's happening to me right now is bad, wait till you see what's coming for you and the generations to come. I wonder if he's saying it's not over. This isn't the end, but the beginning. Jesus's death wasn't the end of his ministry, although it would have been easy for his followers to see it that way in the moment. And it wasn't the end of the struggle on earth either. With Jesus's death and resurrection, a new world begins to come, but isn't fully here yet. And the powers of this world are gonna resist it all the more. So going forward, it's gonna be even more important for people like these women to band together, to bear public witness, to stand in solidarity with the oppressed, to not let the downtrodden face the world's punishments alone. At the end of our passage today, Jesus asks God the Father to forgive the people who are crucifying him because they don't fully realize what they're doing. Perhaps this was also part of Jesus' message for the women of Jerusalem as well. If you're mourning for Jesus' death, you're not seeing the full picture. Stay tuned. There's more to come. But as triumphant as the resurrection will be, the work is still incomplete. Not all of our dark days are behind us. I'll admit I'm unhappy with this passage. I want a glimmer of hope or a promise to hold on to. But I think maybe the value of sitting with this passage today in all of its darkness is 
the reminder that the tough stuff is still with us. Evil is still out there, and disastrously bad things still happen to the people God loves. Sometimes we are called to mourn. So in the absence of an explicit word of hope today, I'm taking comfort in the truth that sorrow and loss are still part of the picture for us. When they happen, it's not because I've done something wrong, it's just because God's kingdom isn't fully here yet. I suppose the hope is that nevertheless, this too shall pass. The promise is that what began on the cross may not yet be fully realized, but it will be. It is actively coming right now. And we contribute to its advent when we like the women of Jerusalem, choose not to turn away. When we provide visibility and companionship for the suffering, when we face it rather than run from it. Amen. Please join me now in a time of prayer and thanksgiving. Satisfy us with your love in the morning and we will live this day in joy and praise from Psalm 90. God of all mercies, we praise you that you have brought us to this new day. Brighten our lives with the dawn of promise and hope in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for the warmth of sunlight, the wetness of rain and snow, and all that nourishes the earth. The presence and power of your spirit, the support and encouragement we receive from others, those who provide for public safety and well-being and for the mission of your church around the world. Merciful God, strengthen us in prayer that we may lift up the brokenness of this world for your healing and share in the saving love of Jesus Christ. Especially we pray for those in positions of authority over others, for the lonely and forgotten, for children without families or homes for agents of caring and relief, and for your church in Asia and the Middle East. And for those you have given us to pray for in particular, God, today we pray for comfort for the families who lost loved ones in the March 15 collision in Texas involving the college golf team, including especially Carol Wurzdell's cousin Keith Zinn and his family who lost Keith's grandson Jackson. We also pray for healing for Vern Hans. Eternal God, you never fail to give us each day all that we ever need and even more. Give us such joy in living and such peace in serving Christ that we may gratefully make use of all your blessings and joyfully seek our risen Lord in everyone we meet. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Please join me now in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Go today with this blessing from the book of Romans chapter 12. So far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised.